Hello everybody, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn a little bit more about international tax laws with me in this video. Now today I'll be talking about the five flag theory. I just recently did a reel on Instagram about this concept and had quite a few comments and questions around the whole topic. So I'll be addressing those during this video. But to back up a little bit, I want to start out with explaining what the five flag theory is all about. The five flag theory was developed in the 80s by a sir called Harry Schultz. Really at the core of the theory is the idea that everyone should be able to choose the best parts of every country and that every country shines for different reasons, meaning one country might be better at doing banking, other country might be better to do business in and other countries might be better to live in. So the idea is that you shouldn't plant all of your flags within one country, which is what most of the people do. Most of the people were born in one country, they live in one country, they work in one country, they set up their business in one country, they have all of the investments in one country, you wouldn't get the gist of it. However, the five flag theory, which was developed, remember, in the 80s, so quite a while ago, says that it's better for you if you plant your flags in different countries, because obviously countries shine for different reasons. And that way you will also be able to diversify your personal and your financial affairs throughout many different governments and countries so that not one single country or government will be able to take all of your flags, meaning all of your assets and all of your wealth. So to put it simple, the five flag theory really means don't put all of your eggs in one basket or in this instance, don't put all of your flags in one country. I hope this makes sense to you. It really is the idea behind being a perpetual traveler, being a digital nomad, being a location independent entrepreneur, or being just truly a global citizen that diversifies their investments, their assets, their wealth, um, all around the globe, because there are no limitations and you really should be able to choose each country for what it shines or what it's best for. So the five, why it's called the five flag theory is because there are obviously five different flags um, to be established to diversify your personal and financial wealth. So the first flag is supposed to be your passport or a citizenship. And you're best off if you have your passport or your citizenship set up in a country that doesn't tax foreign earned income. Meaning you're best off if you get a passport or a citizenship in a country that only applies territorial taxation, for example, Panama. That way you'll get the most out of your wealth and you'll get to keep more out of your money. So the second flag within the five flag theory is your tax residency. What the five flag theory says is that it's best to set up your tax residency in a tax haven, meaning a place where you don't get taxed on your income at all which means that you don't have to pay any income to the local government. Obviously, this is just a theory that's really important to keep in mind. So far, to summarize again, we've got the first flag, your passport in a territorial tax country, your second flag, tax residency in a tax haven. Now, the third flag is your overseas company or commonly known as offshore company. This offshore company should also be set up in a country that is considered to be a tax haven, meaning a country that has 0% corporate tax rate. Remember again that the five flag theory is what it is, just a theory that was developed quite a while ago. So keep that in mind throughout this whole video. 
Now, obviously, that is the best ideal situation that you could have to have set up your passport in a country that only applies territorial taxation, your tax residency in a tax haven and your overseas company in a tax haven. Now, the fourth flag is considered to be the offshore banking. You should be able to set up your offshore banking within a country that has a stable banking system. Again, it's just a theory, but in reality, it is very much true that there are countries that have better banking systems than others, where you get higher interest rates than in other places and so forth. The last and final flag within the five flag theory is your actual, actual residency, meaning where you decide to live. In the best ideal scenario, you would be living in a country that offers you low taxes, meaning low sales taxes and low consumption taxes, where your money brings you the best lifestyle that you can possibly get. So again, the five flag theory is an amazing concept that was developed quite a while ago when governments weren't really able to trace you once you left your home country. To summarize again quickly, first flag, your passport set up in a territorial tax country. Second flag, your tax residency in a tax haven. Third flag, your overseas business in a tax haven with zero corporate tax rates. Fourth flag, your offshore banking account in a country with stable banking systems. And fifth and last flag, where you actually living your actual residency in a country with low consumption and low sales taxes. That's the five flag theory. That's the ideal scenario. Now let's get into the comments and questions around this whole concept. A lot of people were really interested what the five flag theory was about. And obviously there are quite a few people that are trying to live the lifestyle of perpetual travelers, digital nomads, location independent entrepreneurs, and they come really close to the five flag theory. In fact, whenever I design my international tax strategies for my clients, I do keep the five flag theory in mind because it is a great theory, meaning that it offers people a better diversification in their personal affairs and financial affairs. However, the reality is a little bit more complex. These days, there's a lot of more data sharing between governments and tax officials and also banks and tax officials. So it's way harder than in the 80s when this theory was developed to actually be able to set up five flags um, throughout different countries without raising any red flags with government officials or banking systems. So always good to keep it in mind. However, there are quite some limitations in this day and age, especially I won't go into any details around CRS and common reporting standards of banks, but those are the major limitations. Um, banks do have a lot of requirements and KYCs that they need to go through with every new client that they get, which limits already um, the offshore banking system setup uh, flag a lot. So keep that in mind, there are quite a few limits uh, in place with that. So the people who commented on the reel saying that it isn't really possible are somewhat correct. It depends where you come from. It depends where you're trying to set up a flag, obviously. Some countries are still a bit more lenient and you've got a little bit more playroom around the different flags as opposed to other countries who are very strict with their rules and um, fulfilling their obligation and compliance risks to the maximum. So another popular question was whether or not by you setting up five different flags in five different countries would raise tax issues within five different countries. The truth is it all comes down to the tax strategy, the tax planning. 
if you do it right, you can really get around being taxed in the five different countries. If you do it wrong and you get any wrong recommendations and you just simply go and set up um, a company overseas or an offshore bank account without really taking the tax planning into consideration, then that could really go sour and you might end up building up a tax obligation within a country without even realizing it. So again, an ideal scenario might be setting up getting passport in a territorial tax country or at least tax residency in a um, territorial tax country such as Panama, for example, and then get a offshore um, company or what I like to call it an overseas company in a country that doesn't impose any taxes. Uh, such a structure could be found, for example, in the UAE or even in the US through a US LLC. And then um, you being able to live and take advantage of low consumption and sales taxes again, probably best in a territorial tax country. So that could be again in Panama or for example, Malaysia. In that instance, in this example that I just gave you, we've got three countries involved, three different flags, and you could even set up, for example, a banking account somewhere else um, that's reputable within the financial industry, financial sector. Um, let's say you somehow are able to put down a deposit um, in Singapore. So that could be an option. Obviously, you need to come up with quite a high substantial investment to be able to do that especially for the bank account openings there is quite a big investment um, to be put in initially however the other ones in terms of being able to live somewhere and getting tax residency somewhere can usually be done through moving there or also making a financial investment or setting up a company so real life scenario that is really possible you having a company somewhere, as I said, US, UAE, you being able to live somewhere that only taxes um, income from the source and no foreign earned income, so Panama, um, and you having a bank account somewhere that has a, a stable uh, financial banking system. So it is very much possible. Um, I do keep it in mind when designing international tax strategies for my clients and if you do it properly if you do it correctly then no you won't raise any taxing obligations in the different involved countries where you raise tax obligations is mostly always dependent on where your tax residency is so wherever you decide to set up your tax residency will really determine a lot of the times all the rules and compliance issues around the rest of your flags. Meaning if you come from a high Western taxing country, such as Australia, Canada, um, countries in Europe, then you'll usually have a lot higher burden to jump over in order to be able to take full effect of the five flag theory because those countries have rules um, in place that will make sure that even if you set up stuff overseas, meaning if, even if you set up a business overseas, bank accounts and whatnot, that you will have to actually report it back to your tax residency country being a high Western country and you'll actually end up having to pay taxes as if they were set up within the high Western taxing country. So, there's the limitations, mostly coming from high Western taxing countries, but if you still decide to have your tax residency there, but that's why the tax residency part of it is so important. Once you're willing and able to leave your home country and set up tax residency somewhere else, then the five flag theory really can start um, becoming a reality and being laid out into reality and taking the full effect of it and the full benefits of each and every country that you're willing to make an investment in. 
So I hope this clarifies all the comments and questions that were coming up within the five flag theory. And if not, just simply leave me a comment down below. If you learned a thing or two, also appreciate likes and sharing of all the content and super appreciative again of your time. Thank you so much for being here.